Kicking off our list here at number 10, we have Mount Weather. Not to be confused with Mount Chiliad, although that one's quite mysterious as well. We'll save that for another video. Mount Weather in Virginia is an emergency operations center. It's the go-to spot in case of any national emergency. These are for the higher, higher ups, you know what I mean? Like in the movie 2012, they would have went here. The facility is around 560 acres, and it's also used as the command center for the Federal Emergency Alert System. So if there were ever a day where the president needed to announce anything massive, this is where he'd go to do so. It's about an hour away from Washington, D.C., and after the 2001 September attacks, the news reported that these high-level leaders of Congress were taken just 75 miles west of Washington. There was a literal traffic jam of government vehicles going that direction. Also, from above, Mount Weather looks like it's hiding military-style support housing. These notches in the side of the hill are peculiar, to say the least. And that's just the beginning of our list here. In our ninth spot, we have Room 39. Room 39 is a top secret room located in North Korea. The whole location is heavily guarded. They don't want anyone getting into this room. In fact, it's said to be one of the most secret places in North Korea, a place that's already so secretive. It was created in the late 1970s. Room 39 is the meeting place for a top secret North Korean party organization. They apparently get up to a number of illegal activities in that room, like counterfeiting, selling and producing drugs, and selling weapons. Apparently, they bring in 500 million to $1 billion per year through these illegal activities. So yeah, no wonder they don't want outsiders inside of this room. Should anyone try to get in? Well, I'm sure you can imagine what would happen. In our eighth spot today, we have Vale do Habare. Located in Brazil in the Amazon, this area is one of the largest indigenous territories in the world. It's home to a number of indigenous tribes. There are said to be 2,000 individuals belonging to at least 14 tribes living there. In fact, they remained uncontacted with until several years ago. But the Brazilian government has banned anyone from going there. It's illegal if you do so. This is because they want to protect the people living there. Any contact with the outside world could be dangerous to these individuals. We could transmit diseases and wipe them out. So in an effort to protect the tribes, it's illegal to visit the area. In our seventh spot, we have the Korean Demilitarized Zone. This is the area that marks the separation between South and North Korea. The only people that reside there are high-ranking officials. It's illegal for anyone else to visit the site. In fact, it's one of the most militarized zones in the world, so why would anyone even want to go there? In fact, they have enough weapons to bombard Seoul with over 10,000 rounds every minute. Now, the North Korean side primarily serves to stop an invasion of North Korea from the South. Up until 1972, over 7,000 Korean soldiers infiltrated North Korea. More than half of them lost their lives. In our sixth spot today, we have Metro 2. Located in Moscow, Russia, there is a secret underground metro system operated by the Russian Ministry of Defense. It's said that this system connects the Moscow Kremlin with the Federal Security Service headquarters. The only problem is, no one knows where it is. That's how secret it is. People know it exists, but they haven't been able to find where it is or how to get in. Either way, you're banned from doing so anyways. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Varosha Cyprus. Once upon a time in the early 70s, Varosha was a popular tourist attraction. In fact, it was one of the most popular ones in the world. That was until 1974 when Turkey invaded. As a result, all the residents had to flee or else they were killed. They were forcibly removed from their homes and were never allowed to come back. The Turkish military then took control of the whole area, and no one is allowed to enter. In fact, the whole area is now fenced off and under constant supervision. Not only that, but the army patrols have orders to shoot on sight. So people don't even want to take a chance by going even remotely close to there. In our fourth spot, we have Pine Gap. Located deep in the Australian outback is Pine Gap, a top secret military base. In fact, this base has been named Australia's Area 51. That's how mysterious it is there. This base is operated by the Australian government and by the CIA and the NSA. In 2013, it was revealed that the NSA uses this facility to collect internet and telephone records. When originally it was said that this place was just a space research center. Clearly, that was just one big lie. 
So this place is just a big place for intelligence activities and military operations. What's scary is that it's rumored that this base is home to one of the most terrifying surveillance systems out there, the Echelon. This is the code name given to a very secretive and intense surveillance program. So yeah, anyone caught trespassing, you're in huge trouble. In our third spot, we have Morgan Island. This is another island completely off limits, and that's because it's filled with monkeys. Now you might be thinking, oh, I love monkeys, they're so cute. No, okay? These monkeys are said to be infected by the herpes B virus, but it wasn't always like this. What happened was that the monkeys were originally from Puerto Rico, but then there was a viral outbreak among locals because the monkeys became overpopulated. So they tried to fix this problem by moving the monkeys to Morgan Island. In 1979, over 1,400 animals were relocated to Morgan Island. As a result, the island is off limits for your safety and the safety of the monkeys. Coming in at number two, we have Mount Weather, aka one of America's best kept secrets. No, I didn't just make that up, that's actually what it's called. This is a secret facility located in Virginia. In fact, for years, people were wondering if Mount Weather was actually real. It was just kind of rumored to be a thing. But alas, it is real. Mount Weather is an emergency operations center. They have an underground bunker there, so in case of emergency, they can keep all the government officials there in that bunker. They even have their own police department, fire department, and laws for this place. So we all know if there's an apocalypse, that's where the government will be hiding out. And of course, it's surrounded by armed guards, fences, and razor wires. And in our number one spot today, we have Russia's nuclear missile facility. In the Ural Mountains in Russia, there's a top secret town that no one is allowed to visit. This is because this is the place that Russia does their nuclear missile testing. As a result, no one is allowed to go in or even near the vicinity. Again, why would you even want to go anyways? That place is probably incredibly radioactive. It's also believed that around the area, the Russians have a secret bunker complex for the government and or the Russian armed forces. Starting off this countdown, we have the Bluffs. Scarborough, Ontario is known for their bluffs. We call them the Scarborough Bluffs. It's a very popular place to go to and the view is amazing. Tons of people like climbing to the top of the bluffs and then like looking down at the lake below. But over the time, the bluffs have been subjected to erosion and have had landslides. And some of the ground on top of the bluffs has been known to give away under people's feet. They get too close to the edge. As a result, they fenced off the bluffs to avoid this from happening. They even have a security guard monitoring the area to prevent people from going to these bluffs. Sadly, people still don't listen and a number of people have stuck their way to the top of the bluffs. A number of people have fallen to their death. In 2018, there were 18 incidents that involved people falling down from the bluffs. People don't understand just how dangerous this area is. They look at it as a good photo opportunity. Number nine, Randolph Mackin Women's College. Yeah, when you think of a doomsday bunker or anything hidden below the surface of the earth, you're thinking airports, right? Something massive, vaults in the middle of the Arctic maybe, some secret Bermuda Triangle, alien base, whatever. Well, look no further than Lynchburg, Virginia at Randolph College. So around World War II, just like most of these places that I'll mention on this list, a bunker was made to protect people, government officials, and sometimes art. The National Gallery of Art hid paintings in North Carolina, so another privately funded facility at Randolph College was also at the ready. It was this three bedroom hideout for the gallery's curator. You can't forget about art on this list, it's also important. Number eight, the Shanghai Complex. Most of the details of this one are still unknown, as are the other ones on this list as well. How fun is that? A mysterious Shanghai Complex, let's talk about it. It's this massive underground bunker, as you probably could have guessed, and it's supposedly able to fit 200,000 civilians comfortably. It's over 100 million square feet, and it was built in case, well, a nuclear attack were to happen. This was revealed through a newspaper article back in 2006. Imagine reading about this one morning, I'd be like, hi, what? The Shanghai Morning Post touched on the new complex saying that it's got massive protective doors, electricity, good lighting, good ventilation, all that good stuff, and it can fully support life for two full weeks. And yes, it's very secure. Number seven, Pine Gap. Going to the land down under for this one, here we go. Pine Gap is a secret military compound built around the Cold War, and it's been described as Australia's Area 51. Doesn't mean that there's aliens there, but you never know. All we know of this secret base on this mysterious island was revealed back in 2013 thanks to our man Edward Snowden. 
Yeah, he revealed quite a bit, actually. Turns out this island is not a fun resort. In fact, it's a satellite surveillance base that runs espionage operations. And it's got a lot of underground hidden bunkers. You can't even get close to this thing. The NSA is currently using this facility for global interception, and they also collect internet and telephone communication records. So your voicemail to Chad is probably lying in a USB somewhere. Back in the 70s, around 400 American families moved to the nearby Alice Springs. Why? Eh, just for fun, it seems. Just for the waves just for surfing the web and the waves. Number six, the Greenbrier. Located in Sulphur Springs in West Virginia, this US hideout was crucial during, you guessed it, the Cold War. Just 250 miles west of the capital city, the Greenbrier Resort got a fun little expansion as it was being built back in 1958. This expansion to the resort was not another spa. There was no water parks, no splash pool, anything like that. Rather, it was a secret bunker for United States Congress. This bunker was more of an underground city, if anything. When I say bunker, it's like a little where you have to hide in. No, this had a massive cafeteria. This had a dentist's office in case you get a cavity while you're hanging out down there. The crazy thing was, obviously this information was kept under wraps as best as they could, but according to Jared M. Graff, author of Raven Rock, conferences were being held in these public spaces at this resort, but the people walking through there never realized what these actually were. They never realized the bunker's true intentions. It was a doomsday chamber all around them this whole time, and they're having resort meetings. One thing employees did notice was how many urinals were in the building, which is, to be fair, that's kind of funny. That's the first thing I would notice. Number five, Denver International Airport. Since its opening in 1995, Denver International Airport, DIA, has been the subject of many myths. I've heard about this before, this is hilarious. I think it's in Tony Hawk, probably, I don't know. Some are so bizarre, I had to include it on our list today. Yeah, lizard people, apparently they like to build airports. The more you know. So far, it's believed that the Freemasons built the airport, or the Illuminati, or the New World Order. The airport itself is massive. It covers around 52 square miles. There's literal gargoyles that are just hanging out near baggage claim. The art displayed there is a little odd, so I get it. It does seem creepy. Maybe you want to know more about it. But the airport has started to lean into this conspiracy. They're actually laughing at this stuff by now. They have a conspiracy month that began back in 2016. How fun. Imagine going to the airport and they're like, oh, it's conspiracy month. I'm like, what? What? I just want to fly Delta. What's going on? They even show a screening of close encounters of the third kind. So yeah, like I said, they're really leaning into this. I would have leaned into something too if I was hiding a secret bunker and if I was guilty. Just saying. Number four, Project Iceworm. Oh, here's a fun one. As a Canadian, this project sounds like the worst one on this list. So impossibly cold. It's so cold out today. I'm freezing doing this list. Back in 1960s, under the Greenland Ice Sheet, the US Army started to build a mobile nuclear missile launch site. The code name was Project Iceworm, which is pretty fitting under the ground and ice. You got it, I didn't have to explain it. They were close enough that they could hit targets within the Soviet Union, right? That was the entire point here. This project was called Project Iceworm, but there was another project called Camp Sentry that had to be completed first. You can't just show up with a bunch of shovels and be like, all right, let's attack them. No, you have to make a base first. You gotta make sure it's livable. Camp Sentry was a network of underground tunnels and places for workers to stay. There was a kitchen, a hall, supply rooms, communication center, all that good stuff. There was also a nuclear power plant, so things were getting pretty official. Things were well on their way, to say the least. This was kept from the Danish government for seven years, but in 1966, the project was canceled because of shifting ice. Or was it? Number three, the floating White House. This one's not an underground bunker per se, but it was once a doomsday ship. That counts. Also, it's under the water, so it can technically blow uh, Earth level. I don't know. This was back in 1962, before Air Force One. There was a presidential yacht or two. These yachts sound glamorous, but really it's just a floating doomsday bunker. Lincoln had a steamboat during the Civil War that he used, and it was called the River Queen. The USS Mayflower was used by Roosevelt. Then later on, two Navy command ships were ready in the 60s. There was a light cruiser and a light aircraft carrier, one of which was always in the water near the president, just floating by, just lurking about. This is when the Soviet Union had a weak Navy, so the odds of them finding the president's ship in the Atlantic, well, those odds were slim. That is until, of course, satellite technology became a thing. Thing, and then we started looking down from above and then after that the floating presidential bunker wasn't hidden obviously it's probably the worst place to put a president at this point actually just in the middle of the water they're like eh, let's play battleship I guess number two Metro 2 how fitting two and two let's do it 
an underground metro or an underground city. Over in Moscow, there have been many tales of this underground city hiding deep beneath Russia's capital. Once World War II ended, these underground shelters were underway, and originally they were designed to protect civilians, but they had to be done in secret, and also you needed roads to connect these bunkers. So we might as well create a second metro. We'll call it that, a second metro. It was labeled as Metro 2. The rumors, of course, are that these hidden tunnels and bunkers are still being used by the KGB. Back in 1994, this exploration group called the Diggers supposedly found the entrance to this underground KGB tunnel city. Living in Toronto, we have one underground subway station that's like kind of abandoned. Pretty sure the KGB isn't hiding there. I haven't checked though in a while, but maybe I'll take a look. I'll get my boys the Diggers and we'll go and take a look. And finally, number one, the Svalbard Vault. Over the pandemic, I spent a lot of time playing video games and stuff like that, obviously, keep my mind busy. And most of my favorite games, I realize, have a similar like doomsday, post-apocalyptic feel. Like Fallout 4, I was playing it and I'm like, this isn't really, this feels stressful. It's stressful, but quite engaging. And in real life, we have a global seed vault and it's deep, deep in the Arctic Circle on the island Spitsbergen. It's this massive bunker that has since been deemed the Doomsday Vault. How fun. This is where humans will store food crops and it contains 100 million seeds. So if the earth all of a sudden gets wiped out or even if all the ice melts, this vault will be good to go. We won't survive, but we have seeds. All that water just flooded the rest of humanity will now regrow the earth, ideally, which sounds so horrible, but weirdly cute. I'm kind of concerned. Is there something we don't know about this vault? Is that seed guy from Breath of the Wild hanging out in there with his loud maracas? Or Santa? I mean, Santa's only 800 miles away from this area, so... He could be hiding here, you never know. Kicking off the list at number 10, Snake Island. Well, this island already sounds awful. What's going on here? Snake Island is located 95 miles off the coast of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Is that just a name of an island or do a bunch of snakes live here? Well, sorry to tell ya. Both. What happened originally was thousands of years ago, the part of the land that once connected the island to mainland disappeared. The ocean rose up before any of these snakes had time to pack their snake bags and they were stuck on this island forever. These snakes were stuck on the island decade after decade, so now these stuck snakes are just gonna, you know, mate and have more snakes. Now the island's full of snakes. The number of snakes is going up. Higher and higher, it's never stopping. One of the deadliest snakes in the world, the Golden Lancehead Viper. Yeah, there's over 4,000 of them on this island. It's horrible. Back from 1902 to the early 1920s, a few brave souls lived there and operated the lighthouse. But according to some local myths, the last lighthouse keeper was swarmed by snakes after he left a window open. Worst thing I've ever heard. Let's move on. In our ninth spot today, we have Disneyland. Now you might be like, Huh? Lindsay, Disney is not a prohibited location to visit. Well, yes, you're allowed to go there during the day when it's open, but it's illegal to try to enter the park and trespass when it's closed during the night. That's what teen Thomas Guy Cleveland tried to do in 1956. Now the park wasn't completely closed. It was hosting their annual grad night. Thomas thought it would be a good idea to try to sneak into the park. So he climbed over the park's 16 foot high fence. Then he climbed onto the monorail track. His plan was to then run along the monorail track until he was inside the park and then jump or climb down. However, this didn't go according to plan. While trying to sneak into the park, the monorail came along the track and struck him. It ended up dragging his body 30 to 40 feet down the track. He sadly lost his life. In our eighth spot today, we have SeaWorld. What's with people trying to sneak into amusement parks at night? This is another example of it gone terribly, terribly wrong. On July 6th of 1999, a man named Daniel Dukes snuck into SeaWorld. It said that Daniel was kind of a hippie and he loved animals. All he wanted to do was to be able to swim with the whales. So he stayed into the park until it closed and then managed to elude security in order to make his way to Tillicum's tank. That's where he hopped in naked and swam around. Sadly, Tillicum attacked and killed him. He was found the next day dead, floating on the back of Tillicum. His body was so badly disfigured from the whale that they had to do a closed casket funeral. In fact, chunks of his skin and body were found floating around the tank. In our seventh spot today, we have the Hawaii Blowhole. The Halone Blowhole in Hawaii is quite an amazing sight to see, but it is very, very dangerous. Hence why it's fenced off and surrounded by signs saying no trespassing. Well, in June of 2002, Daniel Dick and his family went on vacation in Hawaii. Where they were staying was connected to a beach and the beach was right by this blowhole. One morning, Daniel went out to the beach alone and started chatting up some girls. From there, he convinced them to come with him to this blowhole. 
While there, Daniel hopped over the fence and went directly to it. He hovered over the blowhole until it shot up water. Daniel ended up shooting up into the sky and then on his way down, he fell into the blowhole. He was then trapped in there and it was high tide so it was impossible to swim out or to climb out of it the way that he came in. He was stuck in there for nearly 20 hours before it was safe to save him. But by that time, he had already died. In our sixth spot today, we have the Stairway to Heaven. Located in Hawaii, the Stairway to Heaven is considered one of Hawaii's most dangerous trails. It's very steep and a number of people have died or have gotten badly injured from climbing it. As a result, it was closed in 1987. But that didn't stop Dalen Pua. On February 27th of 2015, Dalen trespassed into the area and decided to climb this path. He had done so without telling his family where he was going. He knew that they would stop him because his grandmother told him just how dangerous it was. Sadly, he never returned home. His body was never found. The last time Dalen's family ever heard from him was around 11 a.m. that day when he texted his family a photo of him at the trail. Theory goes that he ended up falling to his death. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Pelican Valley. In July of 1984, a woman named Brigitte Friedenhagen and her three pals were exploring this area. Brigitte had plans to stay the night in Pelican Valley, which is near Yellowstone National Park. It is very dangerous though. In fact, park rangers say you should only go there if you're in a group of four to seven during the day and you have to stick to the path. Brigitte, however, decided to go alone and camp the night. That night, she was attacked and killed by a bear. It dragged her out of her tent by her skull and sadly ate her. The park rangers literally warned her about staying there alone, but she assured them that she was an experienced camper and that she could handle it. Sadly, the park rangers were right. In our fourth spot, we have Snake Island. Now, I didn't mention Snake Island in my last video and I got so many comments being like, what about Snake Island? But then when I do mention Snake Island, you guys are like, ugh, not Snake Island again, so I can't win. But I will say it does deserve a spot on today's list, so I'm putting it there. So as most of you know, Snake Island is a very dangerous island located in Brazil. And that's because this island is home to around 4,000 snakes. Most of them being golden lancehead vipers, aka one of the deadliest serpents in the world. It's said that this type of viper can grow up to 18 inches long, and it's so poisonous that one bite can kill you within an hour. A number of people who have gone to this island have wound up dead. First off, we have the family that was actually running a lighthouse on the island from 1909 to the 1920s. That was until the entire family was found dead in the lighthouse from snake attacks. Another time, a fisherman came to the island searching for bananas and he never made it home. He was found days later in his boat in a pool of his own blood. As a result, the Brazilian government has banned anyone from ever going there. And if you do, they say that you won't make it back alive and you'll die within an hour. In our third spot today, we have Yellowstone Hot Springs. Yellowstone has a number of natural springs that are absolutely beautiful. Some you're even allowed to swim in. Others will literally cook you alive. In fact, at least 22 people have died from hot spring related injuries. As a result, there are clear signs on areas you can and cannot visit. All visitors must remain on the boardwalk. Straying off this path can be deadly, and that's what happened to Colin Nathaniel Scott in June of 2016. He was with his sister out looking for a place to hot pot, aka to soak in some warm water, and while out looking for this place, he ended up slipping and falling into a boiling hot spring. Emergency services were unable to retrieve his body right away. By the time that they got to him, his body had dissolved from the boiling temperatures. All that was left of him was his wallet and melted flip-flops. In our second spot today, we have North Sentinel Island. Now, this is another island that we have talked about a lot on this channel. Again, it definitely deserves a spot on today's list. Now, the island is home to a tribe that is so isolated from the rest of the world, and they do not like outsiders, which makes sense, okay? They just want to protect themselves and their home. But a man named John Allen Cho thought that it was his job to help him. That this is what God wanted him to do. And if he taught them Christianity, then he could change their lives. So on November of 2018, he headed out to this island. Although a number of people refused to take him there and literally told him that it was a death wish. In the end, he made multiple attempts to befriend the Sentinelese. 
but they were not having it. They would fire arrows at him to try and get him to leave, but he was persistent. November 16th was the last time anyone would ever see Alan again. Alan was dropped off on the island, and when the boater went back to get him, he saw tribe members dragging his dead body by a rope. And in our number one spot today, we have the Nika Caves, Mexico. Now, this is a beautiful cave filled with giant crystals or gypsum pillars. The cave was discovered in 1910 when miners were drilling in the area, but soon the area was deemed unsafe, and that's because of the climate. The air temperature is around 113 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 47 degrees Celsius, and the humidity is killer, literally. The levels were close to 100%, meaning if anyone was in there for more than 10 10 minutes without special breathing apparatuses, then their lungs will fill with water and they will drown. So the caves were closed off. That was until two miners drilled into it while searching a separate area nearby. When they got inside, they saw all these giant crystals. They're like, uh, you're coming home with me. Little did they know the hazard of being there. So one of the miners started sawing off one of the giant crystals. However, it ended up falling and pinning him under it. Now, this didn't actually kill him. What killed him was being in this hot environment for too long. It said that he either drowned to death or that he was cooked alive. Kicking off the list at number 10, Nauru. It's safe to say that the last few years have been a little rocky. Yeah, our plans had to shift a bit to say the least. Nauru, however, is a tiny island located in the southwestern Pacific. It didn't have to shut down during the pandemic. It didn't really see much change. It's the world's smallest island nation and it was originally called Pleasant Island back in 1798 when Westerner John Fern first discovered it. Pleasant Island, yeah, it started out pretty pleasant like most islands do. And then when humans got involved, it, it went to sh the island's natural resource at the time was phosphate, but overmining made the tiny island pretty much useless now. There isn't even a port, yet this island had a railway. Just a tiny island with barely anybody there and a running train. As far as cursed locations go, this one's on my travel list. If only they would just allow visitors. Maybe one day. Number nine. Surtsey Island. While some islands ban humans, others ban humans and seeds. Yeah, no seeds allowed on Surtsey Island. Leave the work snackies behind, my friend. Surtsey Island is an important one on our list here today, as this island was born in 1963. We got a brand new baby island. This new island emerged from the sea 20 miles off the coast of Iceland, and it took around four years for Mother Nature to complete this little passion project. An undersea volcano formed this island over the course of four years. Just slowly, just making a new island. That's a long, hot process, so now what? What do you do with a brand new island? Sandals Resort? Disney Parks? No and nope. Nobody is allowed on this island. The whole idea of Surtsey Island, which I love, is that scientists are trying to study how ecosystems can form themselves without the involvement of us, of us humans. Scientists around the world have all gathered around to do nothing about this island. They're just gonna watch. Only a select few can enter this island, and right before they clock in, they're checked head to toe to make sure they don't have any seeds. Zero seeds. Why? Oh, because scientists found a tomato growing and they were scratching their heads. Where did this come from? How, out of nowhere, how could it be? They were stumped until they found out somebody went number two in that same spot long before. Yeah, welcome to Surtsey Island. Hold it. Better not take a shit here or you're fired, buddy. Number eight. North Sentinel Island. Heading over to India, this island is the home of the Sentinelese tribe. One of the most forbidden islands on the world. We're talking about it, let's do it. Located in the Bay of Bengal, North Sentinel Island is about 1200 kilometers away from India. And while most islands are shrinking, this one is actually growing. It grew back in 2004 phenomenally. Back in 2004, the island lifted up a couple of meters during an earthquake. So the west and south sides gained an extra kilometer. The inhabitants on North Sentinel Island are among the few uncontacted tribes left in the world. You've probably heard about them or seen the thumbnail at some point. They have apparently been around for thousands of years, but there's no sign of agriculture or even fire. Yet still, this tribe has somehow continued to thrive. If we try and get close, they will attack us. After the 2004 tsunami, the Indian Coast Guard flew over to check on the island, make sure everyone's okay. But once they flew too close, the tribe attacked with arrows. So they could not land, obviously, but what if you arrived by boat? What would happen? Well also bad. Back in 2006, two fishermen lost their lives because they got too close to the island without knowing who was on it. The Sentinelese have lived here for around 60,000 years, and I don't think they're going anywhere anytime soon. Number seven, Niwa Island. Located in Hawaii, Niwa Island is quite small, and its population as well is pretty minimal, but why? 
where is everyone? This is a beautiful island. Why wouldn't you want to live here? Why do only 170 people live on arguably one of the most beautiful islands in the world? Niwa Island has also been referred to as the Forbidden Island, hence why we're including it on our list here today. It was bought back in 1864 by Elizabeth Sinclair and it's been privately owned since then. So no one knows what's going on, hence the small population. The thing is though, in 1952, the polio epidemic hit the islands and a ban was then put in place permanently. You couldn't leave or enter the island. That's it. Locked down to the extreme. Like an island locked down, that'd be so scary. Nobody got sick, but now if you want to enter the island, you need to gain special access, which is a lot harder than it may seem. Absolutely no tourists or outsiders allowed. Period. It was sold by Hawaii's king Kamakamaha back in 1863 to the Robinson family, but as of 1915, no outsiders, again, are still allowed in. Some island cult behavior is going on here, I don't know. Whoever lives here does so without plumbing, telephone lines, or Netflix. Impressive. Even today, the island is, of course, off bounds. The Coast Guard is always patrolling the island too as well. What do you think lies on Niwa Island? Top secret government stuff? Probably. Number six, Heard Island. Have you heard about this island? Heard Island? No? Well, listen up. Right in the middle of Antarctica and Australia, there is this island, Heard Island. The Australian government has made it illegal for anybody to visit it. So if you have some free time and a kayak and some suntan lotion, don't even think about it. Go the other way. You won't make it. So why is this island forbidden? Is this one full of deadly snakes? Maybe, honestly. The myth here surrounding Heard Island is that there's animals we don't even know exist living here. We got some secret hybrid animals. This sounds a lot like Jurassic Park so far. The island itself is quite unique geographically. See, Heard Island is home to two volcanoes as well as the tallest mountain in Australia. So there's plenty of space for hybrid animals to hide and be scary. I love the idea of animals getting their own island, honestly. We have, we have enough, I'd say. Time to give one or two back. Except for Snake Island, that one, we don't want that one. You can keep that one for sure. Number five, North Brother Island. Located right between Rikers Island and the Bronx, quietly tucked away on the East River, North Brother Island was once home to a hospital back in the 19th century. You may be thinking a hospital on an island, how inconvenient is this? What's going on? Riverside Hospital was available for patients suffering from yellow fever, smallpox, or tuberculosis. So it was a quarantine zone, essentially. The hospital has since been abandoned. It's now sitting there literally falling to pieces. And the island has been quite active, oddly. A body was found near the island recently. A steamship called the General Slocum crashed on the island. There's also a haunted lighthouse on this island. And they even have what's referred to as Coffin Corner on this island. Yeah, Coffin Corner. I'm all set. I'd rather explore the Bronx than explore this island, honestly. Number four, Robins Island. Okay, we have a forbidden island and it's not cursed. We have a nice one, dare I say, here we go. The privately owned Robinson Island is massive and beautiful. It's not made of lava or snakes, it's just sand and trees, just a good time. And best of all, no humans at all. The 435 acre island sits off the coast of New Suffolk, New York. Many names have come and go when it comes to island ownership here, but as of right now, it's forbidden and it's a nature preserve. I'm okay with that, we can stay away from that one. The owner now is a man named Louis Bacon. He has poured time and money into building the sanctuary and he fears that if anybody else gets involved, the whole thing will just fail. Honestly, considering our number one spot, he's got a point. Aside from that side quest that Mr. Bacon's pulling off, Robbins Island is also home to the largest population of turtles in the state. So don't worry, he's not completely alone. Got a bunch of turtles. Number three, Diego Garcia Island. An island with an airport. Okay, there's gotta be something good here, right? Located in the Indian Ocean, Diego Garcia is perhaps one of the most bizarre on this list. Definitely interesting. The island was once a part of the United Kingdom, but in order to settle up a debt in the millions, the UK had to hand it over to the United States. Gee, I wonder what they did with it. Is it a turtle sanctuary? Is it a forbidden seed island part two, perhaps? What's the game plan here? What are we doing? Well, today Diego Garcia is a top secret military base hence the airport. Although it's forbidden to enter, there's over 600 buildings resting on this island, as well as thousands of military personnel, but again, nobody knows what the island is really hiding or what it's being used for. Maybe this is where they're keeping the Winter Soldier. Could be. He could punch through anyone. He could punch 6,000 people easily. Number two, Paviglia Island. The small island of Paviglia has taken many, many lives. When the bubonic plague arrived in 1348, the island then became a quarantine colony just like our one earlier. So if you had symptoms, you were sent to this island to, yeah. It was a sad reality, not a lot of solutions back then. Again, in 1630, the Black Death crept in and once again, the center of this island became a mass graveyard. All bad so far. The soil, they say, is 50% human remains at this point. So if you're looking to plant some haunted sunflowers, there you go, there's your soil, weirdo. Today the island is abandoned, rightfully so. It's closed off to both tourists and locals. Hey, now that things are opening up again, what do you say we head to Pavigli Island? Check out some bubonic plague history. No, we're good? All right, cool. 
we'll go to Niagara Falls. If its dark history doesn't scare you away, the ghost stories surrounding the island might. In the early 20th century, mentally ill patients were sent to this island, but the doctor that was responsible for curing them for all these treatments, he would actually try these bizarre, insane methods. Cruel methods, really. And the doctor himself ended up going mad, and he ended up jumping to his death from the bell tower. The bell tower no longer stands, but the soil is still 50% remains, so either way, ghosts or history, that's a no from me. I would rather go to number one, Garbage Island. We must finish with this one, the largest island of them all. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Mmm, smells good. Smells like the ocean and all the garbage we've thrown into it. It's located in the North Pacific Subtropical Gyre. There's basically four of these large systems just swirling ocean currents, and some of them are chock full of garbage. Pretty disturbing, right? I've heard of the garbage patch before, but I had no idea how large it really was. This trash island is three times the size of France, and if that's not big enough for you, it's twice the size of Texas. Someone's like, oh, now I get it. This island is man-made, obviously, and it continues to grow. But it's not all grim, however, for our number one spot. There is a team working on reducing that size. The environmental nonprofit Ocean Cleanup has removed around 65,000 pounds of trash. So maybe next time you see this, there'll be only nine islands. We're hoping. Starting off this countdown, we have Zone Rogue. Zone Rogue, sometimes called the Red Zone or Zone Rouge, is an area in northeastern France that got destroyed during World War I. After the war, the land was declared 100% damaged with devastating effects with devastating effects on the agriculture. It was said to be impossible to clean, and human life there was said to be impossible. So the French government prohibited anyone from going there. In fact, this area is littered with human and animal remains and millions of unexploded weapons. So it's literally dangerous to go there. All you need to do is be traveling there and you set off an explosive. That would not end well. Number nine, Bangar Fort. Back in the 16th century, King Mado built this massive Bangar Fort in India. The population of the small town was around 1,000 folks at the time. It was a beautiful fort, and he considered this a luxury. Rightfully so. I mean, it looks like a set piece from Game of Thrones. This is beautiful. The legend has it that Princess Ratnavati, who at the time was living in the luxurious fort, she was the talk of the town. Dudes were proposing left, right, and center. Princes of all over the world would come in and try and take her hand. But she was like, eh, maybe Maybe, eh, no, I don't know. And then one day when visiting town, a magician named Skindia saw the princess shopping for perfumes. So he asked her out, she said no, and he was like, okay, what's step two here? What's plan B? So he then used black magic of Ashikaran on the princess. Yeah, he, he mixed it with the perfume she was admiring, but it didn't work. Luckily, she caught on, she smashed the perfume, and as the bottle broke apart, the magician cursed the entire fort and those living inside of it. And then, only a few days later, an entire war erupted around the fort, and there were tons of casualties. Yeah, let's avoid this area forever, shall we? Cool, great, moving on. Number eight, Kalua Papa. Heading over to the beautiful Hawaii for this one. I always wanted to go. Thing is, islands in the middle of nowhere freak me out. And also, haunted villages, they, they freak me out as well, just a little bit, we don't like those. Once referred to as the most cursed place on Earth, the coast of Molokai sounds like a great time. And from Google Earth, it certainly looks like a fair weekend getaway. But for over 100 years, this was an isolation coast for patients with leprosy. Yeah, not, a, not an ideal paradise. Nothing like paradise there, not at all. Not a, nothing like sandals, we're not gonna bowl the sandals on this one, I don't think. That of course had to change at some point, and the laws did in 1969, so as of right now, no more than five people are allowed to live on this island due to its cursed and horrible history. So you have to get on a waiting list for this one. Number seven, the Whaley House. Located in San Diego and built in 1857, the Whaley House is an example of why you don't build your house on cursed land. Yep, yeah, here's why you don't do it, guys. The site that this family home was built on was also once the location of San Diego's first public gallows. Yeah, what a fun fact that is. Imagine selling a home and being like, oh, did you know, by the way? Yeah, no, I don't wanna know, thank you. And apparently right after building this home and then moving in, Thomas Whaley said he could hear the footsteps of Yankee Jim Robinson, who had previously lost his life in the same gallows only four years prior. After the family had settled, they had all began to experience a bunch of family tragedies, most of which happened inside this house. Hence the cursed land aspect. As of today, the Whaley House is now a museum and apparently the family members continue to haunt the site. So sadly and thankfully, you can't live there anymore. They made a museum to make sure nobody ever stays the night. No guards either. They're like, nope, just everyone, everyone leave at night. That's good. These paranormal occurrences are often accompanied by the smells of cigar smoke and heavy perfumes. So that's a sign of demons. Either that or it's the old couple behind you the entire tour that keeps talking. They're like, ah, what did she say? 
grandpa breath on the back of your neck, get out of here. Number six, the Forbidden City. Yeah, of course we have to mention this beauty. Forbidden City? Kind of hits the mark. Located in Beijing, China, the Forbidden City has quite the reputation. That of a pretty horrible one too. This building used to be the Imperial Palace, but now it's a museum and of course, like other places on this list, it's littered with tourists, whenever it can be. They're like, oh, we can't go here, it's haunted? No problem, let's just all gather at the same time. They can't stop us all. This building has quite the grim history, so the amount of reports that come in, sightings of demon, there's, there was a handful online, honestly. The number of ghostly encounters shot up once the palace opened to the public in 1940s. And in many cases, visitors would report seeing a ghostly woman dressed in, you guessed it, all white. The classic all white ghost look. Like, can't they just wear jeans like a turtleneck? You know, mix it up a bit. Don't you have a wardrobe up there? More often than not, you can find her ghost wandering the palace at night, weeping. Yeah, those who are brave enough to wander at night say they can hear a woman crying just from all around. I can't tell if I'm sad or more scared now at this point. Bit of both. Number five, Hoi Baki Forest. Heading over to Romania, some UFO action on this one, believe it or not. Yeah, back in 1968, a unidentified hovering craft was spotted over this forest. Many locals at the time looked at it as a getaway to another dimension, which is a pretty strange thing to say when seeing something in the sky. A lot of folks disappeared, like they just went into the forest, looked at it, and then they were gone. Locals referred to this legendary forest as the Bermuda Triangle of Transylvania. Again, not a bad nickname. Perhaps the scariest place I can think of. Yeah, a haunted forest in Transylvania that's kind of like the Bermuda Triangle with sleepy hollow trees. I'm all set, I'm good. You lost me at Transylvanian forest, to be honest with you. Number four, Anjikuni Village. Heading over to Canada for this one. Huh, uh-oh. Anjikuni Village is located in Nunavut. This curse began around in the 1930s. It was a cold winter's night, as most of them are in Canada. The moon was completely full and Joe LaBelle, a fur trapper at the time, was traveling to the most northern region expecting to meet up with company. Only when he arrived to the village, he found it completely empty. Despite every hut being filled with supplies, clothes, pots of food, etc. Just everything. Perhaps one of the most jarring details of this winter excursion was the graves of those who had passed before in the village. Those graves were opened up. All of them. Meaning whoever or whatever came by most likely set into motion a cursed village. Great, thanks. That's... This sounds horrible. I like, people do this in Egypt now. We're like, stop, stop opening these tombs, please. There's pandemics, like clearly there's something afoot. I don't know who or what wanted to open those tombs, but you need to read a book, my friend. Or a map, clearly. Number three, the devil's sinkhole. A sinkhole. Cursed. Why, of course. What else is a sinkhole? Obviously, it's cursed. This one's located in Rock Springs, Texas, and it's 50 feet wide and 400 feet deep. A lot of people claim this is the entrance to the underworld. And it certainly looks the part, doesn't it? The Devil's Sinkhole was first discovered way back in 1876, and it wasn't empty, which is pretty scary, considering it's a new, brand new hole into the earth. Findings of arrowheads, bones, and burnt rocks suggest at one point in time this was probably an ancient burial ground or an ancient palace of sacrifice. Either way, let's go home. Let's back it up. Oh, cool. Chris, if you found a bone in a hole in your backyard, would you just move? Yeah. Yeah. Exhale, then yeah. Not even like a maybe. Confidently, yes. A place called the Devil's Sinkhole is of course now a tourist attraction. People just sneak in and try and see what's down there, but more so because of the amount of bats inside that will just flock out. Locals will often gather some evenings to observe millions of bats pour out of the sinkhole to, you know, hunt for food. So unless Bruce Wayne is down there, I'm betting on this being the devil's doorway. For sure cursed. Let's move on. Number two, Huska Castle. According to folklore, the Huska Castle, which is located north of Prague in Czech Republic, is built over a bottomless hole that leads directly down to hell. The legend claims that the 13th century King Ottokar II offered a pardon, a pardon, to any prisoner who agreed to be lowered into this pit in order to see what was down there. Sure, I would do it, I'm not gonna lie, I'd probably do it. Woo! The first prisoner who was lowered into the pit, he only lasted 30 seconds before he started screaming. Legend has it, as soon as he was brought back up, his hair had turned white and he had aged 30 years. Yeah, some Avengers Endgame science right there. We need to go back to this pit and figure something out. He was also telling stories of these half-human creatures that flew around in the darkness with scaly wings. So, sounds like somebody we know, I think, on this list. I don't know. The castle was built over the hole without things like water sources or any kitchens or anything like that because apparently it wasn't meant to be used by humans, but rather as a place to capture the demons should they rise from this mysterious devil hole. Nice. I'm glad we got some real estate on standby for these guys. Can't leave the demons out of the real estate market. We're good. We're inclusive. Just a bunch of demons. They're like, oh, it's good. It's good spacing. Uh, how many bathrooms? 
It's floating around. Three bathrooms, I think that's good. That's good for a family, that's good. It's good for four. And finally, number one, Raynham Hall. Norfolk, England. I've been to England a couple times now, and I gotta say, one of the most beautiful places that I've ever been to. I would love to live there if I could. Just, you know, not here specifically. Just not around Raynham Hall. We don't like cursed halls. The Lady of Raynham Hall became a popular tale back in 1936 after this photo was published in the papers. Legend has it it's the ghost of one Dorothy Townshend. She was the sister of Robert Walpole, who was the first prime minister back in 1676. Some history for you. Some reports say the image is a result of a long exposure gone wrong, but it's so long ago, this is the most compelling thing we have really to the paranormal. More than likely, it's long exposure gone wrong, but either way, I wanted to finish off on a cursed place with an actual photo, you know, I like to include real photos for you guys. This is one of, if not the most debated photo of a spirit of all time. The first sighting was Christmas Day, 1835, so make sure you're not on the naughty list if you live around here. He's checking twice, apparently, that big old guy. Mm -hmm. 